Russ Mitford was Mr. Sutton Hoe until he retired in 77. Then he passed the mantle on to Martin Carver, who in turn will pass it on to someone else as he retires. And, and, and it's like they're bestowing, you know, here's my legacy, look after it. Whatever you do, don't change the story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one is a series of, um, <laughs> I come across a series of articles in the East Anglia Daily Times oh, this about, one, yeah. the, about the tanks. Uh, yeah, and it, back, back, in the, back in the 42, I think it was, uh, something that was turned over to the military and they used it for training purposes. They dug trenches, uh, they dug slit trenches in the mounds, they dug anti-glider trenches across the site. Uh, they had war games across them, and it, it was reported that there were tanks in the, the 12th of September 1949. American tanks had destroyed the Sutton Ho burial ship. Uh, only on the hollow in the ground indicates the spot where the funeral ship was placed. Uh, and at that time, Bruce Mitford was forced to issue a response because the locals were getting really annoyed about this. Um, there were still Americans, I believe, um, in the area because you've got the Rendlesham Air Force Base and things like that. There, there's been a, where there has been an uh, American presence up, right up until long, you know, the last couple of years, I think. The locals were, were <laughs> really putting the boot into the, into the Americans who were stationed there. Uh, Rupert had to come out and basically say, no, 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 it's not, it's not a problem. No, we took everything of, a, of archaeological interest out of it, out of there. You know, they, they can't have possibly done any damage. A bit ingenious, really, because the imprint yes. of the ship was still there. And he went and dug it up in the, in the 1960s, <laughs> he re redug it. Um, so they had done. Uh, and when yeah, they also the, the mounds themselves are part of the evidence, aren't they? You know, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, the, 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 the mounds are, yeah, exactly that. They are part of the archaeological record. But, but um, you know, so he was being ingenious, but I think he was forced to actually issue it because, because uh, to reduce the tensions between the locals and the Americans who were still on site. Oh, I'm sure he's a consummate uh, diplomat, Mr. Bruce Mitford. Uh, but um, in, in 1942, uh, it was not used by, 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 the, by the military on the, for tanks and things like that for very long because a guy called Lieutenant Ted Wright stepped in and, and stopped them. And in fact, they were not tanks, they were Bren gun carriers. They were track vehicles, they weren't heavy tanks, they were... were, they were Thank goodness for that, carriers. yeah. Uh, and, but what they were doing, they were, they were running Bren gun carriers over it and they were digging pits for mortar, you know, for mortars to be sighted as part of their war game exercise. Anyway, the important thing to notice there is the guy who stepped in as a lieutenant, he, as he was at the time in the army, was the guy responsible for the pre-war excavation of the Ferranby boats. Very interesting. And we know all about those. Yeah, we do, we? yes. <laughs> so that was another yes. one, an example, just, just so people don't know, people yeah. watching, that uh, they were automatically assumed to be Viking until they were uh, tested and they were found to be thousands of years older. Yes. <laughs> thousands <laughs> of years older. Thousands, yeah. Yeah, this is why you're frustrated years. that none of the wood uh, seems to be tested at Sutton Hoo. Yeah. Very but strange. Again, you know, it, it, you know thankfully, someone who, who appreciated yes. the value of it stepped in at that point, and, and he, he put up you know, big fencing all around it, out of bounds. They still continued around, around the mounds, and they still dug trenches and glided trenches and things like that. Well, thank you, um, Lieutenant Wright, for at least uh, a trying anyway. Yeah. But then the, 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 the real culprits uh, who have been doing this uh, actually were perhaps found later on. When, when, when he was doing his uh, uh, re-excavation of Mount 1 in the 60s, uh, they came across a cap badge of the South Wells borderers. It looks like it was Welsh evidence. Or the ones driving the Britain carriers, not Americans. <laughs> Planted evidence. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I, yeah, a nice, nice little story that. It but, is, uh, it is. Again, classic it, false flag, the hat badge, though. There you go. But again, it's classic. No, nobody, nobody looks after our history. Nobody, you know, they, they'd already dug up the, the sudden who built out this mound. At that point, it should have been recognised that you know, the whole, the whole thing. There were other mounds that hadn't been excavated. There could have been other boats in them. You don't know. So why, why go and mm -hmm. put your you know, my, my gun drive tanks over it. Yeah. 
Well, I also say the hubris of the British Library, because around the world, uh, you could say <laughs> protecting uh, monuments or, or looting monuments, depending on your viewpoint. Yes. And the justification <laughs> is always that these, uh, you know, third world countries don't know how to look after don't their know how to look uh, after them. historical no. monuments. No, it's, it, it, it's crazy. The, the next one is... Uh, hey, good old MPP, there he is. Essex man, you know, and uh, this guy has been in the news recently because of the Stonehenge and this series that it was, you know, re-erected in the, it was erected first in Wales and then transported to, to Stonehenge. Yeah, if I could just say, we've got separate programmes, we've made interviews with Robert Langdon, who's written a lot about this, and if, I know Bob knows about this one as well, that's going to be another series coming up. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, Bob, carry on, yeah. Yeah, this guy is, is much in the news, and he he is actually Mr. Stonehenge today. You know, he he's the one that's and, and, and uh, as you go th through time, you know, all, all these people emerge. You know, Rupert Bruce Mitford was Mr. Sutton Ho until he retired in '77. Then he passed the mantle on to Martin Carver, who in turn will pass it on to someone else as he retires. And and and, and it's like they're bestowing. You know, here's my legacy. Look after it. Whatever you do, don't change the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and th that, that is, in fact, I think what goes on and why, why it's so difficult but, you know, to actually get people to admit that perhaps the interpretations are wrong or, or the history is wrong. You know, it, it's been looked at the wrong way. Anyway, he, he came out in the 4th of October 1982 as a, a younger archaeologist uh, and he really annoyed uh, Rupert by uh, suggesting that it was an Essex man in the tomb, not a, not an East Anglian. Um, I suggested it was uh, Sabert um, instead of Radwald. And this caused, yeah, there was quite a lot of angry vitriol and angry bits in, in, in the papers back and forth, you know, they're arguing, arguing the points. You know, Mike, Mike saying, yes, it's definitely an Essex man. And we're going, no, it's not. Anyway, the, the last word on it was basically the, the, the last, last, the last bit in the in the spot was in you know, back and forth in in the paper uh, was basically so Rupert Bruce was saying the study made absolutely no impact on my thinking. Well, it never would, Rupert, would it? You know, your mind was already oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one called Sutton Who East Anglian because that's where the damn stuff was found. <laughs> <laughs> so. Although my person uh, Park Wonderful. Put, put forward a well-argued reason why a firm reason yeah, why yeah. could be Sabert, Bruce Smithford was not even going to entertain listening to that argument or looking into it or countering it. In fact, it's I, just quite simply East Anglia it is, and it's bloody get over it, son. Fun. Yeah, yeah, I've made my mind up. It would make a um, wonderful poster, really—a picture of him in his posh suit and everything—and. Uh, the study absolutely no impact on my thinking. Just, <laughs> you know, it's like but, a mantra. It should be yeah. on his gravestone. Uh, yeah, you, 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 could, you could just see it now. You know, the <laughs> veins bulging on, it, on his forehead. <laughs> yes. Say what you like, you will have no impact. <laughs> uh, so. Well, uh, and then, then oh, another the, one, right, okay. Yeah, the final one we got is the restoration of Mound 2. Um, Ma Martin Carver, they did this for, for a number of reasons. <laughs> the, the, the stated reason, and, and, and uh, Martin Carver got a large, large amount of money to ca carry on excavating a number of the other mounds within Sutton Hoo on, a, on I think it was a five-year programme. And he got, he got a large amount of money out to do all the budgets and show all the justification for this. And at the end, they come to the bit now where the whole of the site, because he excavated in and around all of the mounds, the whole of the site was a complete mess. And it had just been handed over to the National Trust, and we're going to open the, the National Trust Museum that's there today, about Sutton Hoo. So they, they said to Martin, you've got to clear it up. Ah, oh, okay, what do I do? Uh, we wanted to look like Disneyland, yeah. not an archaeological yeah. thing. So they got a digger, <laughs> and they put all the earth, and they put it all over the top of mound number two. Uh, and the reason for doing that was, uh, the, the official reason for doing it is that they, they now made it up to the height that it would have been when it was first erected, and we can now monitor the rate of erosion. But perhaps the real, the real reason was just to, just to get all of that earth spoil <laughs> out of the way. So that it all up a bit. Yeah, so we could just come around and walk around the mounds. Um, Anyway, Martin okay, Carver... Just, just a quick comment, because we have run out of time, but I mean, 10 men, 10 hours a day, six days a week, 10 yeah. weeks. 
It's just one of the slowest navvies in the world. You know, no, like about ten miles of rail down in that time. That is that is the point that I'm going I'm going to make. He, All right, he, okay. did, he did that calculation, and um, it's based on the on the figures down, down underneath the left hand photo. Yeah, the so we've got a bunch of anemic, unfit archaeologists digging with trowels, have you? And that's what I think it is. I think he's based on archaeology thing. If I, uh, when I was in Africa, I had a team of, of ten lads. They exactly. could have built that. They could have built that man in about three or four days. Yeah, no problem. Um, and and to do it in no problem. Ten, ten of them as well. Ten, 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 ten. Yeah, the, the man would the man would be ten times the size of that. Uh, yeah, it. I don't know how he calculated that. I, I think he's out by a factor of about 10 somewhere, somewhere oh, at least. Along the line. I, I think th th there's certainly less than a week's work. I, I think three or four days you could get a respectable man looking just like that. Yeah. To dig, and and, and w within 10 days, I think you could dig it out and, and rebury it, you know, and replace it. But there we are. I mean, yeah, the, the, one of the reasons I included that was that, you know, like 10 men, were, they seem to make out that it's a much bigger task a massive know. project you've got to bring yeah, things massive. together it fills in with mike's ideas on stonehenge now, doesn't he yeah. of bringing societies yeah. together and all this kind of mumbo jumbo he has thrown on the top of basic evidence isn't it you know yeah you, you'd, you'd have 10 adolescent lads and they'd be told here yeah, when you finish it there's a couple of beers in it lads you know? yeah come on crack <laughs> yeah. on boys you, you don't get the beers until you're finished you know right? yeah yeah that's it yeah and surprisingly how quickly that man would have arise absolutely i, I think it's, it's three four days work um you know a week's work maximum yeah fit blokes as well isn't it you know you look yeah, how no, the railways they, are they, built they were they were fit they wouldn't have had wheelbarrows so my lads in America, in, in africa just use bowls and it was really fast you you've got one filling up a bowl and you've, you've got another dumping it out on the on the, on the thing yeah you you dump you you can create a big hole very quickly <laughs> very quickly excellent right yeah so well, these are the professionals though so there we go so we have to be careful what we say well, I think Martin Carver was calculated on the basis that they were all using trowels. <laughs> <laughs> and the fitness oh, regime was real ale. A spoonful at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Got a real ale in the bar fitness regime. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Bob. Right. Cheers, then. All right, so if we hope you enjoyed that. There we have the most important archaeological site in the whole of Britain. And it's been, um, it's had tanks driven over it, trenches dug through it, mortar replacements made on it, people use it for practicing war games. Um, then you have the situation at the end of it when it came to clearing up the dig, you just got a bulldozer, pile it all back into a big hill. So that's us looking after our most important archaeological site when it comes to discussion. As Mr. Midford said himself, and uh, none of these studies or arguments could have any impact on him whatsoever. So just imagine if he come forward and say, oh, by the way, what if the person in there isn't actually Anglo-Saxon? You can start to get uh, an understanding of how difficult it is to get these uh, sort of positions across, no matter how much evidence you supply. So there we go. So hope you see more from Britain's Hidden History. Lots more, uh, just, just as disturbing in some ways, videos about other parts of our history and how they've been dealt with. So thank you all for joining us and we'll see you at the next one. Until the next time, Hedu.